engine running. Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Don't forget to stay connected, let us know what you like, and please help support us on Patreon, so that we can keep bringing you great lessons on rocket science. Today we are first going to look at this interesting concept. This ship is called SUSE, which stands for Smart Upper Stage for Innovative Exploration. SUSE is being built by Ariane Group in France as part of the European Space Agency's reusable spacecraft program. SUSE is planned to be an automated freighter, not unlike the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser, but it will be much larger. It will have a launch mass of 25 metric tons with a payload capacity of 7 metric tons and a volume of 40 cubic meters. It will be 12 meters or 40 feet long and 5 meters or a little more than 16 feet wide. In a crewed version, it can carry up to 5 astronauts. One of the things we must consider when we send up human beings is that, along with the mass of the humans, we must add tons of life support equipment and supplies to keep those fragile humans alive. Here is Susie perched atop an Ariane 64 rocket. The Ariane 64 is an Ariane 6 rocket with four boosters. The Ariane 6 has been under development since the early 2010s and is planned to be a cheaper but equally capable replacement for the Ariane 5. The 6 is 63 meters tall and 5.4 meters wide. It has a gross mass of up to 860 metric tons and has two stages, not counting the boosters. These are solid fueled boosters, which help lift the hydrogen powered first and second stages. SUSE is much bigger than any currently operating spacecraft. In October of 2023, a 2 meter tall, 100 kilogram scale model was test fired with an intermediate-sized demonstrator planned next, with the much larger model to come later. SUSE will do a belly flop maneuver to re-enter the atmosphere, and, like Starship, will land propulsively. SUSE would greatly improve Europe's capabilities in space, which, for crewed spaceflight, is non-existent right now. Next, I will make a simple assertion for you to consider. There has been and still is absolutely no reason that we have waited all this time to explore the moon. NASA has spent tens of billions of dollars on the SLS and the Artemis program, wasting decades of time and untold fortunes, when the moon has always been close enough for us to explore it robotically. The first rovers to land on the moon were sent by the Soviets back in 1970. These were solar-powered, radioactive decay warmed rovers that were 1.35 meters tall and 1.7 long, with a mass of 840 kilograms. These machines were remotely controlled from Earth, as the signal delay between the Earth and Moon is only an average of about 1.3 seconds. Two of these rovers landed on and explored the lunar surface, with three television and four panoramic cameras, an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer and X-ray telescope, radiation detectors, ultraviolet astrophotometer, magnetometer, and laser retroreflector. Lunacod 1 operated for almost a year and Lunacod 2 for about four months. From 1971, when Lunacod 2 quit transmitting until 1997, not a single rover was deployed anywhere in space. And nothing was done with the moon until China landed the Chang'e 3 rover in 2013. My point is this. The United States, right now, without the SLS or Starship, has everything it needs to explore the moon. It has the Falcon Heavy, which, though not human-rated, is perfectly capable of launching robotic missions. And with the help of our ally, Japan, 
we could use this robot designed for the moon. As you can see, it is capable of doing almost anything a suited astronaut could do. And unlike humans, this robot doesn't need life support and tang. Remote control robots and construction equipment could have been mapping and developing lunar resources and building shielded habitats for the last half century. I don't see any way that the current Artemis mission plan can hope to succeed in the time given. For one thing, while the SLS can launch the Orion spacecraft around the moon, the Orion space capsule itself does not have the Delta V capability to go into low lunar orbit, much less land and come back. It is nothing but a lunar return vehicle, and NASA right now does not have a single lunar lander, despite several great examples sitting in museums across America. SpaceX has agreed to try to turn the Starship into a lunar lander, but I don't see any way this thing will be human rated in time. I think that the lunar Starship should forget about reusability and become an expendable three-stage vehicle, launching a propulsion and landing module that could then go on to the moon combined with the capability of an Orion return vehicle, just like we did for Apollo, solving all of the current problems. Something to consider. Let me know what you think. And stay safe. Ad Astro Proterra.